Hey everybody, it is Chainsaw, and today I am reviewing The Order of Things, the new All That Remains album. It has been released a little while ago, and I know this review is late, but you guys know I did retire. And you're probably wondering, why is he back? Well, you'll find out in a little bit. So, anyways, let's jump into talking about this album. So, first things first, um, yes, I know I retired, I'm back, simply because I have to talk about this. I have to talk about this record because I defended their last album, which was A War You Cannot Win. You know, the 2012 release from All That Remains. I gave it a pretty positive review, but at the same time, I still had some issues. And I go, I actually went recently back to the album a couple of months ago, and I still hold true to some of the things I've said in the review, but at the same time, there are some things I'm not truly happy with and I don't enjoy the album as much as I did before. I feel like that it, it, it has some moments where I'm just like, wow, this is really good to where, oh, what happened? But now we're at to the order of things three years later. I don't know what happened from 2012 to this album, but it feels like that the, the band got some studio notes from the producers that basically said a couple of things. Number one, Phil... We know you like screaming, but can you do it as little as possible? Number two, guys, you've written some great songs in the past. Just write generic songs. Just write a couple of generic, a couple of fillers, throw it into the mix, and see what happens. Number three, come up with one or two decent riffs for a song, and then the rest of them be very generic and boring to the point where you don't even care when a good riff pops up. And there's your album. The order of things to me is literally, like I just said, a mixed bag of a lot of things. This album has one or two decent tracks to where the at least the song isn't completely boring to where you're at, there's actually something going on besides the solos, which I'll get to a little bit later. But literally, there's one or two songs that are decent enough to actually listen to without going, seriously, did you guys not put more effort into it, to some very generic songs where the riffs are very boring to the point where they're not even trying to riff they're just playing open chords or they're just playing the same note over and over and over in different ways like triplets and then five times hit it and then open to the point of where the songs are literally just nothing they're just nothing there's nothing going on there's no build-up the intro is very boring there's nothing really to it the chorus and the verses are just nothing it's just phil singing all the time and then the courses are basically the same thing as the verses, where it's just lighter, and then it's just like, oh, it's different because there's actually a melody going on, so we have to think it's better in some way. <sighs> this probably won't end well. The opening track has some piano bits that kind of basically says, we're cool like every other band that does it now. We're going to have some piano in the beginning, and then we're going to hit in with the heavy song. The piano bit at the very beginning of this album, this probably won't end well, is generic. It's It sounds good, but it's generic. If you listen to it, there's nothing really to it. It builds up, yes, to the song itself. When you get to the actual song, nothing. It's nothing. There's no buildup. Phil is singing the entire time, so there's no, no screams to where you go, oh, well, actually, there's some heaviness. It's just light, and it's just like, ooh, it's Phil singing. It's, 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 it's really cute, you know? And then you get to No Knock, the second song, which is... A complete 180. Now, I think this is where the band had a bipolar moment or they got were the, or they had short-term memory loss. Because literally, this probably won't end well with the piano intro, the chorus, and, and the verses are sung by Phil instead of no screaming. And it sounds like a radio-friendly track to where No Knock, the very next song, is chug, 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 triple chug riff, open chords, some bending of the the bending of the chords, some bending of the strings. There's no real riffing. It's just Phil screaming all the time on No Knock. It's like a complete 180 from the other song. It's like we're guys, we're we're still heavy, but there's no variation in the riffs. The riffs are just nothing. It's just open, 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 open. They're not actually hitting any strings. They're just hitting open chords most of the time. Then divide. Track number three, they go right back to the radio friendly that we know, that we've heard so far from the first track. And then when you continue down the line here, for you, track number five, what? That song made my head hurt. Because For You is the most generic ballad slash generic radio song I've ever heard from this band. 
and I've heard in a very long time from bands I listen to. There's not a lot of bands that go so far off the deep end where they have to write a ballad that has no meaning to it. There's a me there's metal bands. This band themselves have written ballads that actually have some meaning to them, have some actual really decent moments to where it's not a complete mess of like, oh my god, they're just writing a ballad to get the uh, to get the uh, uh, more of an appealing audience that likes the ballads. The fact that For You was written is very simply to say, we got nothing. We have no other, we have nothing else to put here. We're going to put a very generic ballad with nothing to it. And we're going to get away with it. A Reason for Me to Fight is pretty decent. Bite My Tongue is pretty decent in a sense. Fiat Empire, I believe that's how you pronounce it. I don't give a shit how you pronounce it, to be honest with you. Track number 10 literally had a riff. To me, I re-listened to the riff five or six times. It's right before the chorus, or in the chorus, I couldn't tell you because the song was confusing to begin with for me personally. But there's a riff that sounds like it's not in tempo. It sounds like they're just playing the riff where it makes no sense. Phil is doing his singing. Ooh. And then you have this riff going under it that it, it sounds like it's not in tempo. It sounds like it's not following along with the vocals or the freaking drums. That's bad if that's the case. If that if that's what exactly happened, or maybe my ears are messed up because oh my god, you're you're not you're you're not really into metal because you don't know time signatures and blah blah blah. Then fine. But for me, it didn't sound right. True KVLT metal, track number eleven. I'm sorry, but what the actual fuck were they thinking naming that? It literally it looks like to me when you read the title of this song. It feels like they spent more time on the naming of the song rather than writing the song. That's how bad it was. It was Phil screaming once again like No Knock track number two. He's just screaming the whole time in this true metal song. And that's it. There's nothing really to it. There's nothing else to it. Just screaming and just riffs. And we're done. There's no build up. There's nothing to it. Criticism and self-realization is the most interesting title, but it's also the final track. Now, here's what I'll say. There is one riff on criti criticism and self-realization that I actually like. No, actually, that, that, that I, sorry, that I didn't like. The rest of the song is pretty decent. It's one of the, it, it's, to me, it's one of the better songs. It's not because it's ending the album, but there's this one riff they continue too long, in my personal opinion, and I'm like, stop. Stop it. Just stop. Then, the ending is kind of like the beginning of this album. The ending ends with piano. And it kind of just fades away. Now, here's the here's the difference. The beginning of this album with this probably won't end well. The piano for the beginning of this album was generic. It sounds good, but it's just generic, and there's nothing. There's no. It's it's just not. It's not appealing. Criticism and self realization. The ending, the last two minutes or so of this song. The reason why it's seven minutes and three seconds is that piano at the end is actually pretty good. It actually there's actually some you know moments going on where you're like, oh, this is. You know, it, it sounds kind of weird at first. You have to replay it a couple of times to kind of get the feel of it because it's it's definitely not like the beginning of this album, but the way it's set up, the way the piano's kind of ending criticism and self-realization, it's pretty, it's pretty good. I have to give them that. But it's pretty sad that I feel like that the piano at the end of a song, at the end of the album, is better than more than half of this album, guitar-wise, drum-wise, vocal-wise, bass-wise. That's pretty bad that a piano... Basically, two minutes or less, depending on how you where it stops and starts in the actual song itself, is better than the actual music they wrote for this album. That's bad. I've never done this before, but since I pulled this up on the Wikipedia page, here's some review scores we have, people. We have four here. We have About.com gave it a three out of five. Artist Direct gave it a five out of five. I wonder if they were paid. <laughs> Metal Sucks, one and a half stars out of five. Sputnik Music, one star out of five. Now I'm just reading that off simply because you heard me ranting and raving and now you're seeing what other professional places have reviewed it. And this is what's placed on the Wikipedia. For me, I'm not going to go through the entire band. You know, the only thing I will say the positive is when Phil does actually scream, which is very few and far between, when Phil actually feels like screaming, when he feels like, hey, I'm going to scream because that's what I used to do, then, you know, it was good, but... You know, he sang most of the time, and the lyrics, oh my god, some of the lyrics were just terrible, terrible, just god-awful, like, they, he literally, it felt like he sat down for about three-fourths of this album with the songs, and took about two, two and a half hours out of his day, and just wrote three-fourths of the lyrics for this entire album, and said, okay, we're done, that's, it, it feels like that, because it's so, 
It's laughable at moments. It's like, Phil, did you even try? I don't think you tried. I don't think he tried. Well, the only thing I will say is that Ollie, probably mispronouncing his name, the lead guitar player, and then we're done with this uh, freaking video, is that his lead guitar playing, his actual solos, were actually good. It doesn't matter how bad the song was, in my personal opinion, any of these songs you throw at me. It doesn't matter if I enjoyed the song or if I hated the song. Literally, it felt that his solos actually had some emotion and actually something behind it. You know, his solos are still good. Regardless of what you think of the, the past albums and this album, his guitar playing, his solo playing, at least has something to it to where he's actually building on something. He's actually putting some thought into these solos rather than doing exactly what the rhythm guitar has been doing for this whole entire record and being generic in a lot of areas. His solos actually have stuff going on to where you're like, hey, that's enjoyable. I actually enjoyed that solo. I'll repeat that solo again because, because right before the solo and after the solo, it's just generic playing most for the most part. But his solos are the only good thing really that stands out. Everything else, it's just they didn't try. They did not try. So you guys are probably wondering if I'm going to be continuing with re these reviews where I review crappy albums or if I'm back for sh uh, full time. I'm going to tell you guys, I don't know. I, this was kind of a uh, wing in it because honestly, Midnight Strike 3625, his review, as he reviewed it last night, my good buddy Midnight Strike. And after listening to his review, I had to go listen to this album. I had to listen to it and go, what am I missing? And I really wish I stayed away. <laughs> but anyways, guys, my my... I don't want to rate it. I don't want to rate it. You know my thoughts about it. I'm not happy with this album at all. If you have a rating for this album, tell me why. Let me know in the comment section. But I'm not I'm not giving this album a rating. I'm just... This is just depressing. Because this is the band that wrote The Fall of Ideals and Overcome. Ever since then, at least, at least with A War You Cannot Win and you know, whatever the album was before it. I can't remember off the top of my head. I'm not even going to look it up. At least those albums had decent tracks. They had some good songs. But this album... There may be one or two, but this is, this is, this is, ah, I don't, I don't want to know what the next album is after this. I really don't. So I'm done with this video, guys. Peace.